everyone's path is a little different. I know this sounds a little contradictory because I do talk about certain commonalities among those who wake up and certain types of pointers that tend to work and tend to help people to bump directly into their true nature. So there are similarities in some sense, but the narrative storyline trajectory of any given person's awakening really is unique. And it's critical that this lands, that this message lands, because what happens is we have such a doubt mass, we have such a tendency to doubt ourselves, doubt our experience, doubt our intuition, uh, that we don't realize how much that doubting puts us in our head. A very common question I get is, Angelo, I went through this, this, and this, or this occurred, then that occurred, and then this kind of experience happened. And the question is, is that okay? Or what do you think of that? And much of what I have to say is just, yeah, of course it's okay. However it plays out for you is fine. I may have never even heard of anything like that, but I get the sense of the trajectory because there is a commonality among all of those who awaken. The strange thing is that what's common among all those um, all those practitioners, let's say, is the one thing that doesn't change, the one thing that doesn't come and go, the absolute aspect, let's say. Uh, so what is awakening? Well, in one way of speaking, it's where the relative meets the absolute. And there's a kind of catalytic explosion when that happens. It's actually the first time you realize directly the absolute nature. And it's a big deal. It's a, it's a very fundamental shift. It's a very fundamental insight. And it's critical. So in that sense, it is common to everyone that the, the shift into what's never been lost um, is homogenous. It's the same. It's indistingu indistinguishable in any way from anyone else's truth. It's the place where there aren't individual truths. It's the place where there isn't an individual path. Uh, and yet in the only way we can actually tell a story is, which is through symbolic language, through thoughts, through concepts, through stories, uh, it's always going to sound a little different. It's always going to look a little different. The story is always going to be told a little differently. So understand that there is a part of the mind that will always try to formulate doubts. And you don't have to believe that part of the mind. You don't have to believe that part of your experience. You can just notice it for what it is, which is a thought or a series of thoughts. It's okay. It's okay that those thoughts are there. There's no need to push or pull on them. There's no need to believe them. And there's actually no need to reject them. Just develop a neutral relationship with thought and continue to orient to that which is not touched by thought, that which neither comes nor goes, that which cannot be created nor destroyed. The part of your experience that is simply not subject to doubt in any way. That's what you wake up to. And when you wake up to that, you realize very paradoxically that you were never asleep, that nothing is asleep. Nothing is hidden. Nothing is missing. Nothing needs to be found. There is no coming and going. The absolute isn't somewhere else. This is the absolute. The relative is the absolute. Form is emptiness and emptiness is form. This is what we wake up to to some degree, initially. So again, everyone's path is going to be a little different. You don't need to doubt yourself if it looks different than you've heard or looks different than I describe. That's not what I'm really pointing to. I'm not pointing to a series of events. I'm not po uh, pointing to a story, even if I tell my own story. What I'm pointing to is that part of you that's so real that your own doubt can't touch it. The part of you that's so true that it would be absurd to ask me if you have it right. Find the doubtless. Find that part of yourself that just can't doubt, that never has doubted, that has never touched a doubt. And you won't need to ask me. That's the beauty of awakening. It's self-validating, as I describe in my book. It's self-obvious.
awakening wakes up to itself. It's not anything about you or your story or a narrative or time or doership or agency or choice or doctrine or practice. It's simply awakeness waking up to itself. Nothing more, nothing less.